would you please stand to sing our opening hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights. <laughs>
shown to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith.
The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not touch, touch it, or you shall, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the saw the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took a bit of fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed big leaves together, and made loincloths for themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Blessed are those who have endured temptation. They have stood the test and will receive the crown of life. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan! For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Son. 
And so this time in the wilderness appears to be a time for working through and adjusting to this vocation, a time of preparation for the ministry which is to come. Now it's this, I think, that lies behind the tactic adopted by Satan. So the first two temptations both begin with the words, if you are the Son of God. If. Satan, in other words, invites Jesus to doubt himself, to feel the need to prove himself. In other words, the underlying temptation behind the particular temptations is for Jesus to doubt who he is, to doubt God's call on him. It is designed to elicit actions born of insecurity and lack of trust. And that's why turning the stones into bread is on. We know that Jesus does miracles at other times, which involves something not so very dissimilar, turning loaves and fishes into a feast of 5,000, for example. But it's why this miracle is asked of him. It's to prove himself and to prove who he is. And this Jesus will not do. Now we too are tempted in a similar way to doubt who we are in Christ. What he promise us, promises us and what he calls us to be and to do. And I become clearer and clearer that one of the most important things we need to do both individually and corporately is to understand our identity and be confident in it. To inhabit not only the Christian faith, but the particular tradition and calling which is unique to us. And this is what gives meaning, integrity and power to what we do and we must not be diverted. The second thing I notice about this passage is that this of course is the one that gives rise to the common classification of temptations as being of the flesh, the world or the devil. So the flesh, turn the stones into bread because Jesus is hungry, the world, all this, you know, I'll show, prove yourself to the public arena and of the devil worshiping you can have everything. So in the first temptation, oh I was going to say as well that it's not just that these that these temptations are um, you know fulfill that world flesh or flesh world devil um, classification, but they're kind of progressive. So in the first temptation, Jesus is hungry, so Satan takes him to make bread out of stones. In the second, Jesus is tempted to make a public show to gain attention by leaping from the temple. Now, of course, this is all about a stylized presentation, but nevertheless, there's a kind of appearance of reasonableness up to this point. You're hungry, make some bread. You want to make, you know, you've got a public ministry, let's make a show. But in the third temptation, the real agenda, the big lie, is right out in the open. Worship me, says Satan. Serve me and I will give you everything. In other words, do not serve God. If you do, you will be deprived in some way. Seek your own power and glory, but actually, by the way, your own power and glory comes at the price of serving me. 
But Jesus is astute enough to see that what he's being offered is not power and glory, but slavery. The real slavery is this offer from Satan, and that serving God is the true freedom. Now, we are not presented with these choices in quite this way, clearly. This is all a very sort of, uh, well, I've used the word stylized a couple of times. It's a stylized narrative. Nevertheless, we do face the same issues. And we too need to understand that it's in fulfilling our vocation and serving God that we find our true selves and our true freedom. And the temptation to think otherwise will always be with us and always be desperately and ultimately fatally misleading. I know in passing, by the way, that this passage demonstrates amply that the mere quoting of seemingly opposite scriptures can be highly misleading and no guide to God's true intention. I can't imagine what public, recent public discussion I mentioned that in relation to. But do you know that it's Satan who quotes the scriptures first? Jesus counters with another quotation, but he does demonstrate that you don't establish the truth just by picking a scripture and quoting it. Something much different. We need wisdom to interpret God's will for us correctly in all matters. And selective quotation will not lead us there. We need, we need to understand the whole narrative and what its principal claims are. But that's not my main subject this morning. I want to end by emphasising that my hope for us this Lent is that we can use it to renew and reinforce our understanding of and our confidence in who God has made us and who he calls us to be individually and in our corporate, our together ministry and mission as the parish church here in West Point. Amen.
pray for God's protection of the church and of the world. Guard the church against the assaults of evil. Be close to us when we are tempted to abuse the, abuse the gifts we have been received, to make a show of strength or to use influence from false motives. May we never use means we know to be wrong with the excuse that the end will be good. Lord, in your mercy. Look with mercy on a world where there are many temptations, where some think only of their own bodily comfort, some desire to show their power by foolish acts, some seek greater power and embrace evil to attain it. Following the anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine, we pray for the people of Ukraine and for the people of Russia, for their countries and their leaders. We pray for all those who are afraid that your everlasting arms hold them in this time of great fear. We pray for all those who have the power over life and death, that they will choose for all people life and life in all its fullness. We pray for those who choose war, that they will remember that, you're direct, that you direct your people to turn our swords into plowshares and seek for peace. We pray for leaders on the world stage, that they are inspired by the wisdom and courage of Christ. Above all, Lord, today we pray for peace for Ukraine. Come with your saving love and bring life to the desert places of all hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Grant that what we offer in this land may not become a temptation to pride. May our homes be more joyful and our work more dedicated as we seek to bring our lives closer to the life of our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on those who, in the wilderness of the world, find no relief. We remember especially the people of Syria and Turkey. Hungry, fearful, lonely, many are falling into despair or following ways that lead to deeper distress. May God and his angels bring them relief. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have passed from this world and are free from all temptation. We remember especially Betty Hill and any known to each of us. We give thanks that they are delivered from evil and pray that we, in our time, may be brought to worship with them and with the host of angels. May our prayers be accepted in the name of Christ, tempted like us, but without sin. Merciful Father, accept these prayers.
and the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Exchange a sign of that peace.
It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks, Holy Father, O Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because you give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and sing.
the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. We offer you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. God, by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe, not by our merits, but pardon our offences, and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, will honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one, because we all share in one. Jesus is the man of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us give thanks to him. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and minds to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, the first order of business, of course, is to find out what Jam have been doing. They're ready, I see. They look like they're walking us today. Yeah, says Darcy. Shall we start with you, Polina? Can you tell us what you've got there? What have you been doing? Like, we've been learning how to listen to evil and only listen to Jesus and what the Bible says. Ooh, okay, excellent. And what have you got there? What's this? Tell me what this is. Dogs, perhaps you can say what these are. This is things that the devil would say. Okay, so temptations, yeah. But we would say that I got God on the answer. Okay, can you hold it up so people can see? So, you, what's happening here is that, can you, can you see them? The, these are the temptations here. And you can move it around and see different temptations. But the answer is always no, because I love, because I love God more than that. So, correct? Yeah, excellent. You're going to Thomas. Look, look, I'm going to wave it at the car because I can't see. There we are. Okay, do you get the concept? Excellent. Thank you so much, you three. Good to see you all. Uh, notice this, two things. Uh, first is that the Lent groups begin this week, and so there will be a Lent group meeting at 7.30 on Tuesday evening at St. Michael's Shearwater. They will be hosting our evening meetings. I shall actually lead and facilitate this first one, uh, although the leading and facilitation will move around over the weeks. The theme is Dust and Glory, the Church of England's Lent um, course or series for this year. Um, you may already be sorted, but if you'd like to come and haven't yet got your Dust and Glory booklet, or have, you can download the app, by the way, it's terribly, you know, Church members really good at it. You can download the app. Very useful. Um, but if you haven't got the Dust and Glory material and want to come on Tuesday or indeed on Wednesday morning, here immediately after the um, Eucharist, uh, that's at 10, so I guess it will be around in or 5 or so, the Dunedin uh, group will begin. Then um, talk to Vicky in the first instance. Send her an email or catch her when she's there on Monday between 12 and 3. She may have enough left. We may have to get some more, I'm not certain. In which case, we might have to avail ourselves of the services on Amazon, on the grounds that they get, they get them here quickly. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, okay, so, but I think Vicky has probably already ordered a few more, so you should be in luck. Um, now, we have a concert on March the 11th, which is really quite soon. And actually, Ian, are you there? Will you just come and tell us about it? Because I'm not confident of my ability to remember all the salient points. I'll try and remember. Uh, so it's called Music for a While. That's a song by Purcell. There's some more Purcell. Uh, there's some uh, secular songs. Claire's Every Door to Me from Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Some Bernstein, some Foray, uh, lots of good favourites, suitable for Lent, 
um, maybe say for one, which was kind of brings us into, into the, the, the Easter thing. So at 7 o'clock, it's given uh, principally by Rosanna, who's our professional um, vocal coach, Harry, Alice, Thomas and Stephanie will also be contributing. So 7 o'clock, tickets £10, including refreshments, last about an hour, uh, so it'd be great to see everybody and you can get tickets or uh, book tickets with me um, or Alice or Harry afterwards. Thank you very much. So now will you please stand again for our closing hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Heart. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of